Hey, this is Terry from AJ Aircraft. Uh, today on RC Tech, we're going to talk about how to properly drill and balance your propellers for your giant scale aircraft. So let's zoom in here and get to it. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the balancer itself. Um, probably one of the best ones that I've ever seen on the market is this Dubrow balancer. Um, has adjustable heights however I really never ever adjusted mine since I put it together the first time actually um, and a spindle where you can hang your props over the edge of a table which works really good for large props and I use this for electric props all the way up to 36 inch uh, the only thing I do to it periodically is spray some dry lube in here to just keep these spinning freely just in case dust or anything gets in there and it's kept on serving me very well um, in setting this up you do need to make sure that the spindle is flat you know, actually what you'd want to use is a bubble level just to make sure that it's level um, I know that this one is level my table is level and this is set up level so we've got a good start um, just to clarify because I know somebody will ask right away um, I have modified mine slightly um, because I'll balance spinners and a lot of times uh, spinners with thin back plates require this to be on backwards in order to get it tight in there. So I've modified this um, and to keep it balanced I had to do it twice. I drilled and tapped a hole so that I can actually lock this in place and keep it tight with the spinner in there so that you know what that is. Okay, so what, the one we're going to be starting with here is a 24 by 10 Falcon Carbon and uh, I've installed my uh, balancing shaft on here so it's just to make sure it's very important to have this tight in here you don't want any slop in there because it will give you miscellaneous readings that are going to throw you off uh, so just make sure that's nice and tight um, we're going to go ahead and throw it in here and we're going to check the blades. So, what you'd like to do is put it in there, rock a little bit, set it on center. Try the other way. Sitting there pretty darn good. That's actually almost more perfect than they normally are. Um, typically you might have one blade that might just barely fall like this that's going to be good enough I definitely wouldn't wouldn't waste time trying to address that people say balancing the hub if you're not familiar with what that is essentially what you're going to we're going to do is check the balance of the entire mass of the prop and we do that by standing it up on end and it's checking the entire mass and if we have to fix it we're going to add weight to the hub so it's called balancing on the hub so just like the blades this one is just about as perfect as we can get here just a little bit on this side we might might take a look at that one and it's definitely a little bit heavier on that side is what we would want to do is add some weight to the to this side to counteract that because that's falling off a little bit more than what I would like just to give you a visual on that I'm gonna apply a couple of pieces of tape over here on this side of the hub and since since the blades aren't off at all I'm just gonna put it dead center on the hub so now if I put some tape on there now it's standing up good. That's actually perfect. Okay, so now you're saying how the heck am I going to add weight there? I certainly don't really feel comfortable drilling holes in the prop like they did from the factory where, um, and putting weight what we're going to do is do something much more simple so you can see that just a few layers of masking tape actually cured this one pretty pretty good so it's not going to take much so what you do to do the hubs 
we're going to put a tiny piece of the sticky back velcro on that side of the hub just going to double check and make sure I get it right so heavy here goes over here we're going to stick that right in the middle press it down real good you could clean it with some alcohol first before you stick it on there and just because this one took such a very little bit I'm going to actually check it with just the velcro on there and we made a difference we got pretty close but not quite it's just a little bit yet so now what we're going to do is take some thin CA we're going to put a couple of drops on the fuzzy velcro just a couple of drops you can shoot it with accelerator just make sure that the accelerator is dry before you try to balance again just give it a mist and let it dry thoroughly or just let it dry on its own and then check the balance again and with like this one with about three or four drops of CA is probably going to be perfect and being right on the hub the the forces in there this is going to stick on there for the life of the life of the prop um, what I would do in this particular case is now I would drill it and then throw it back on here and double okay, check. Now we're going to take a look at another prop. Um, this one is a 29 by 9 wide. Pretty large prop. Same process. We're going to throw that on here. Tighten it up good. Set it on here and see what we get on the blades. Okay, right off the bat, we've got this one is a little bit heavy. This would be pretty marginal of whether you would add weight to it or not. Being this is such a large prop, I probably definitely would add something to it. Just rotate around here to make sure we get the same reading. definitely got a little bit heavy on that side uh, any little vibration at all uh, shortens the life of your bearings obviously makes a mess out of your airplane in time etc and see how the hub is pretty darn close that's really really close okay so what that told me is that it's just our blade so to fix a blade off what we're going to want to do is add some material to the lighter to the lighter blade double check to make sure okay so yeah this is my lighter blade um, you definitely on a carbon prop or even on a large wood prop you never want to sand on it and you never want to modify the face or the back um, with any type of sanding or anything like that we want to do it so that we're not affecting the performance of this at all um, I recommend well the one thing I use but I recommend two things um, I've had good luck with this duplicolor acrylic enamel uh, but if you have it available, I more prefer any, basically any type of lacquer. Uh, lacquer is going to dry with a thinner coat. Will it basically resist any chemicals that you may use on your on anything that your cowl on your plane resists. This is going to resist. Uh, acrylic lacquer may may react with some cleaners. Uh, definitely probably with some reaction with like denatured alcohol things like that so um, I have found that this one actually holds up to chemicals very very well so kind of see what's available obviously things aren't available to everybody um, but the lacquer is definitely my choice make sure that this is warm you can put it into a warm bowl of water or run some hot water in the sink and let it sit in there for a little bit when you warm this up it's going to spray even thinner yet um, obviously follow the instructions and make sure your garage or your workshop or whatever is at the 
correct temperature and that kind of stuff. This will stick just fine on a prop. Uh, what you want to do though is clean this really good with denatured alcohol and it'll dry instantly. And you're going to heat this up, shake it up, and you're going to put right on the end. Um, it's not going to take a lot. Once we've done that, dried, we'll check it again. Again, once you drill, um, or better off, drill first. You know, when we had a blade off, drill it and double check it. And if it's still off, then, then do this, the clear coat. Um, that's going to give you a nice balanced prop and your, your engine will thank you, your performance will thank you, everything. It's just a good good thing to, to balance a prop. Here. So if we were to put this prop on here brand new, you're going to check it and say this blade fell and then we put it up on the hub and just for instance say it fell to that same side. So now we know that this side of the hub is light and this blade is light because it fell this way and it fell this way. So now if we were to balance the hub using the Velcro, again heavy side and heavy side, if we were to put our Velcro over on this side like that and add CA until it balances this way. Now we've added weight on this side and we've added weight on this side of the hub. If it if we start adding a little bit of CA and we find out that maybe the hub is starting to look okay but the blade is still falling that's telling me that we can't really correct this problem with with this solution. So then what I would want to do is take this off and start over um, and what we would first since the blade was worse we would start out by balancing the blade with our with our lacquer and get it to stand good like that and then check our hub and it's likely if it was off that bad it's likely still going to be off a little bit then what we could do is like we did on our first prop we could put this velcro over here right on the center because now we fixed our blades so we want the weight in the center we could put a little CA on there until we have <clears throat> the blades that we already fixed and then the weight over here would fix our fix our hub situation that we had so hopefully that makes sense likely on a falcon carbon prop you're not going to have a prop that's so far off on a blade or a hub that you can't fix it with one way or the other or both um, Typically, the blades are not going to be any more than what we've just experienced. They may fall off just a hair. And so again, if, you're, if your blade falls off but your hub's perfect, use the lacquer only. If your blade is off and your hub is off, you can try this method. And just experiment with it. If you've got a, a, a scrap prop or like a wood prop that may be off somehow, something hanging in your, in, in your basement or uh, your garage, Throw one on here and play with this theory a little bit, <clears throat> and you'll find that once you once you do it a time or two, it clicks and and it makes it really easy to balance props very accurately without a whole lot of work and without adding a whole lot of weight or a whole lot of paint or anything else. Okay, so now that we have our props balanced, we're going to move on to drilling. Definitely try to do is make sure you have a good drill jig. There's a lot of really cheap ones out there that wobble out really fast. Um, try to use a really good quality one and particularly one that has some good body to it. A good good bit of meat to, that's going to help keep the drill bit straight as it goes through. Um, it's very important. You don't want it wobbling out. It should go without saying never drill a prop by hand. Uh, just because you have a jig doesn't mean you can drill it by hand. Uh, you're likely not gonna get that done very very well. What you basically always want to do is start drilling from the back. The back is kind of the the business end that's what has to match up to your engine and so you want to start there to make sure you're starting off correct. 
if you start off out here and you do get a little bit off next thing you know the holes don't line up with your engine and then you're drilling holes bigger or wobbling them out and you've got a real mess you've made a mess of a really nice propeller if you're setting up a new plane you may have um, a spinner such as uh, this is a back plate for a peat model spinner um, the Mejlik spinners and the Falcon spinners are all the same. They all have an undrilled back plate. This one I'm actually putting a new prop on on an existing plane. So I already, now I have to match my prop to the back plate. If you are drilling your prop and your back plate, I suggest drilling your prop first. Um, figure out where you want it on your engine, uh, getting your prop against compression, and just kind of eyeball and figure out where you want your drill pattern to be drill the prop and then match the back plate to it. Um, it's the same process to, to do the back plate to the prop or the prop to the back plate. Um, essentially what you're going to want to do is grab a ream or it's usually a 10 millimeter if you have a 10 millimeter drill bit or something extremely close to it. That is the size of the center bolt. So what you want to do in this case is put that in there and now we're going to put the prop on there since those have the same size hole and what we're going to do is just sort of very carefully put the spinner on line those holes up and figure out basically where we want our prop you know get it centered in the slot etc um, you can have a, a friend help you possibly and what you can do is pull this off carefully and hold it while the other person maybe puts a piece of tape on there or something if not just be very very careful pinch this over and hang it off the edge of a table and use your drill bit in a drill and just lightly kiss the back of the prop with with your drill bit just to just to index it to where so that now you know where in this area you need that those two to match now you're going to want to install your drill guide on the back of the prop and uh, line up the that hole so Okay, so now you can see what we have here. We've, we've just barely marked that. And now that's gonna give us a perfect place to line up our drill guide. Okay, so now we've installed our drill guide on there. We've got it clocked right. Um, you can use a little flashlight to shine down in there and make sure that you're exactly where you want uh, according to our indexed hole. I'm not gonna be able to show you on the video, but trust me, it's centered on there just perfect. So now we're going to be ready to drill. A lot of times I'll buy my drill bits as they call them jobber bits, or where basically where you can buy them one at a time and sort of disposable. I get them from McMaster Car a lot. Basically the drill bit here is always gonna be five millimeter. You're gonna find a lot of times you really can't hardly even get the bolt through a five millimeter hole with a, with a nice bit. So I'll usually get a five millimeter bit to drill the hole. Um, this jig has been used so many times, this is actually a 5.4. So I'm gonna drill this out with 5.4. You can, if your holes are a little bit tight or just a tiny bit off, you can uh, dream them back out before installing them in with like a 5.6 millimeter. As long as you get your prop nice and tight and everything, it's pretty flexible to open that up between the 5 and 5.6 millimeters. That's a very small amount when you look at the bits, you can hardly tell the difference. So, Okay, next important thing uh, besides the drill bit and the guide is the drilling device. We've already talked about not drilling a prop by hand. Um, a lot of people are going to have a, a tabletop unit like this. Um, they actually work pretty pretty good as long as they are not super sloppy. 
um, and or you're running them at super high RPM. Uh, this one is actually a pretty good quality. It's a Wen brand. Uh, I know a couple other people that have these and they, they've had really good luck with them as far as the run out. The run out being the slop in the shaft. I am running, when I use this one, I'll, I'll take this to events and stuff if I know there's going to be a lot of people there. Usually there's somebody that's going to end up looking for a drill press at some point. I'll take it to take it there. I'm running this at uh, this is the slowest this one goes is 740 RPM. That is kind of important. If you're running at a super high speed on this thing, it's going to accentuate any type of run out that you have in, in here. It's going to make your prop drill jig last a shorter amount of time. It's going to make your bit kind of get a little bit worn out faster because it's going to get hot. When it gets hot, then it gets dull. If you have access to a, a large floor standing drill press, by all means try to get your hands on that to drill your props and run it at a slow speed, um, probably in that five, 500 to 700 RPM range is going to give you a good cut and just take your time. Okay, so we've got our floor standing drill press. I um, apologize, I've kind of got mine over here in the corner. Um, we'll do the best we can. <laughs> Uh, as far as video. Um, this is a, a jet floor, floor standing unit. Um, number one, it's heavy, so it's not going to vibrate much. I'm running this one at 580. Yes, 580 RPM. And I went ahead and uh, periodically, I use this mostly for drilling props, but Generally, you want to put uh, a square of some sort on here with a with a bit, and periodically check that your table and your bit are 90 degrees to each other this way and this way. Um, you never know; people, you know, somebody might come through and bump this, and you maybe don't see it. Just make sure that it's straight, because last thing you want is holes in your prop going at a slight angle. So. Once we've checked that, we want to set the depth. Um, I use a, I always use a spoil board on my on my drill press, and you'll notice I have some recessed holes in here. I've done some drilling over here previously. Um, the recessed holes, I just usually use a Fostner bit um, that's actually plenty larger than the bolt and the in the washer that's going through the face of the prop. Since we're drilling from the back first, we need, we need a place for that to, to go into and, um, and still have the face of the prop flush with our table. So that's going to do that for us. It also gives us something to drill into just a little bit. And what that's going to do is keep the bit from blowing out this side of your prop. So, um, Good suggestion there. This this saves uh, saves a lot. So, um, lastly, what we're going to do is set the depth of drill, a depth of cut on our drill press to just below the surface of our spoil board, so that it does exit and just cut into there. But we don't need to go any further. Speed up the video so that you don't have to watch the entire thing in the, in its slowness. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill one hole all the way through, and then I'm going to drill each of these other holes approximately half through and then we're gonna flip the jig around on the other side and we're gonna do that again we're gonna go through the hole that we drilled through to make sure that that's cleaned out and we'll drill all the rest of the holes all the way through the spoil board again and that's gonna make sure that's gonna give you the best chance of having these holes all straight because you've done some of the drilling from both faces and we started from the important side the back so I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Also you'll notice that I'm going to do the drilling in sort of a pecking motion. I'm not going to go all the way through in one shot. Uh, that's going to make the tip of this extremely hot and you're going to get a really bad cut. The hole is going to widen out progressively. It could potentially push off to the side just a little bit with all the crap that's caught up in the tip. So I definitely want to do a little bit of a pecking and let the pull the scraps out 
as you're drilling. So we're going to do that. Okay, so as you saw, we did exactly what I said. We're gonna, we drilled one through. We drilled the rest through approximately half. And you'll also notice that while I was drilling the five halfway through, I didn't move the prop on the spoil board at all. We just kind of moved that around as a unit. If you are constantly moving this and, and picking it up and that kind of stuff, you're gonna get some of that shaving dust in between and you're going to potentially screw things up. So you would definitely want to try to just keep that tight to the spoil board as much as long as possible during the, the drilling. So we're going to go ahead and take the jig off and flip it around to the front side of the prop. There's our drill holes. And, uh, just by eye, I'm going to line up the hole that we drilled all the way through. You can, if you want to, you can use uh, a prop bolt. Obviously, you don't have to do it by eye. I've done quite a few of these, but you could use a prop bolt, which is the same size as this, and push that in. I kind of, my bit's getting a little bit dull. It kind of flared out my hole on the exit there a little bit, but if you want to, you can insert a, insert a prop bolt there and then put your bolt back on the jig. Double check it. Looks good. So now as we said we're gonna repass through the one that we drilled all the way through and then we'll continue drilling all the rest of them all the way through as well. Okay now that we have our drilling done, um, drilled from both sides and everything, we're going to pull the jig off. Now as I mentioned, my jig is just a little bit worn out, so I've gone to just drilling right away with a 5.4 millimeter drill bit. Um, so my bolts are going to fit in there actually pretty well. If you drill with a 5, you're so perfect to the size of the bolt that you may actually have a little trouble. Um, you can try a couple of things. You can put your 5 millimeter drill bit from your drill press back in your, in your drill and kind of just work that back and forth a couple of times by hand. It might be just enough to get the last little bit of stuff out of there so that your bolts will slip through. If not, you can get a 5.4 millimeter drill and just just carefully drill that through to just ream it out just a tiny bit to 5.4 and uh, then your bolts will slip right through. Now as I mentioned my bit that I'm using today is basically probably on its last use so what you'll notice is that I've got just a little bit of a bump. What you can do, you, uh, you don't want to leave that Ideally, you start with a, the best bit possible, but I kind of wanted to show the worst case scenario. So, what you can do is get yourself a countersinking bit and put it in a drill. And what you want to do is just barely kiss this. It doesn't take much because it's only flared up right, where the, right around the edge. So, just like that. Just barely. Alright, now that's just enough that you won't feel any ridges. You don't want any ridges because you don't want any imperfections in the way of your back plate in your prop or your washer in your prop 
that may give you a false torque reading or a false anything. You just don't want anything in there. That's, that's very important. Um, I use that same process a lot of times when I'm doing aluminum back plates because you pretty much, even with a new bit, a lot of times you'll get a little ridge on an aluminum back plate. Same thing, grab that, grab that uh, bit and just kiss it just a little bit to, to get rid of that. Okay, so now that I've gotten rid of that, I've got my 5mm bolts, they should fit in there like that. So they should have no, no, obviously we're not going to put the drop on backwards, but they should fit from both sides just fine. Now I just happen to have an engine here that's waiting for a, a new plane, a new AJ aircraft slick that's coming out soon. Actually, it should be on the water by now. I'm just going to double check that these should all thread in. without any binding or fuss. If you do have one that doesn't want to go in, you know, if it's if you got one here that you got to kind of wiggle at, don't force it. Um, you're going to probably end up uh, damaging the bolt or worst case the hub. Um, if you strip the threads in the hub, obviously you know it's got to get a trip to, to Arizona in this case of this engine to get a to get a new hub you don't want to do that so so there we go so please make sure to join us on our next episode of RC Tech thanks for watching